Hey everybody and welcome to the Outdoor Kitchen Show. Today we are on location at Creative Cajun Cooking in Santa Ma, Louisiana with Jimmy Babin cooking up some quail stuff. Jimmy, we haven't done that in a long time. No, we got quail eggs and the people that does the eggs, harvest the eggs, they get quails. So we get to benefit some of them quails. That's right. We're going to cook up some quail breast wrapped in bacon and then we're also going to do a quail gumbo right. and a quail egg potato salad. And we've got another land yap that goes in the show. We'll just see what everything can fit. And we'll be right back to the Outdoor Kitchen Show. Y'all stay tuned. Call the Bug Man at 923 Bugs, the Bug Man. We get them when you can't. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Outdoor Kitchen Show. I'm Marissa Turner, and today we are on location at Creative Cajun Cooking with Jimmy Babin cooking up some quail. All kind of quail. Yeah. Now, what are we going to get started with? Well, we're going to get started with taking a grape, a uh -huh. little green grape, and put it between two of the quail breasts uh -huh. and wrap that with bacon. Mm -hmm. And plenty put, swamp dust all around put, it, right? Yeah, put a little light touch of dust because you don't want too salty mm -hmm. overdoing because right. bacon is salty, right? Right, right. But you know what? I do put dust on my bacon. <laughs> oh, by all means, you know, but if you get I out do. of hand, you know, you get out of hand. Right, right. So we'll put some dust on the quail and we're going to stuff it with green grapes. Yeah. All right, I can't wait to see Ain't how that goes. Ain't normal, girl, okay. Um, and then we're going to do a quail gumbo, which I'm all for that, yeah. absolutely. And okra in it. And okra in it, I'm fine. So. We're having okra in my gumbo. And also, as long as you don't put tomatoes and corn in it, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you would. But, uh, okay, so the quail gumbo, and then also we have, of course, with your quail eggs, that you have the bold and the regular and all the yummy stuff, a potato salad. That's right. Yeah. I got potatoes to go in that too. Hey, there you go. Hey. Bonus times too. Uh -huh. Hey, maybe we'll figure it out which comes first, the egg or the quail. Um, I think today it's going to be the quail because we're going to bacon wrap that sucker. That's it. Of course, you can do this with whole quail as well and just put the grapes in the middle. But since Jimmy has the breasts, he's putting the grapes in the middle and then bacon wrapping. So he just pops those grapes in there, closes it up, and wraps it in bacon. Of course, you can season the outside of the breast with the magic swamp dust if you want to. And it's up to you how thick or thin you want your bacon. But he's just going to wrap it once around and then once over. And of course, for the recipe, you can go to our website at theoutdoorkitchenshow.com. I'm going to sprinkle a little smoking frying rub across the top of that just to add that little extra kick. Just a light sprinkle. Then we're going to come back with some magic swamp dust. That's the brush without the MSG. We ready to go in the oven? All right. How long that takes, I don't know. We're gonna do the quail gumbo. That's it. Okay, and you also have some andouille and some okra to throw in there as That's well. Right. And we had a bit of a philosophical discussion about browning the meat before you put it in there. Now I'm in Uncle Calvin's school, you brown it before you put it in there. Jimmy is just like, eh, he thought all in the pot would be fine. It all tastes the same. I'm like, no. We're gonna brown it. We're gonna we act gonna like brown we're, it. we're on the West Bank. You know huh? why? You know why? Because we get to put more swamp dust on it that way. Hey, there you go. There you go. And I also will cave to your four minute roux. See me, I take like 40 minutes to make a roux. Jimmy does it in four because he doesn't do anything slow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can slow it down. It's okay. It's okay. No, you do your four minute room and I'll just try not to have palpitations. <laughs> you ought to see us behind the scenes and I'm 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 usually over there with the with the whisk going. <laughs> I'm gonna get a whisk for you right quick. Look, he's gonna get this roof bone, he's gonna pop it upside my head if I don't shut up. So okay. we're gonna make a roof and we're gonna brown up the birds, because I won that one. Baby. And then uh, brown the onions and that good 
brown bits down in there. Yeah. Little extra swamp dust and all that kind of stuff. Now, are we using um, just the swamp dust or are we gonna use one of your box mixes? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some of this smoking fried rub. Mm -hmm. See that rub, that, that kind of like give you that little bite and a little bit of smoky flavor. So good on game. Oh my gosh, huh? it's so good on game. From deer, quail, alligator, it don't matter. It's good on game. Mm -hmm. Some good stuff to have at the camp. So just as long as you don't overdo it. Just don't overdo it. Just yeah. don't overdo it. It's right. It's rough. That's, uh, well, I wouldn't say rough. It says it's use gloves. hot. <laughs> use, use gloves. That's what it says. Use gloves. But it's good. Sparingly. Mm -hmm. And I like the little bit of like mesquite buttery awesomeness. Oh, yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. That's Especially awesome. with the swamp dust. And you can use them together because the swamp dust doesn't get too salty and neither That's does right. this. Yeah. All right. So are we doing the, the chicken or the egg first? What come first? The roux. <laughs> first you start with a roux. <laughs> <laughs> Clocking it this time. <laughs> What's the ratio of the flour? One to one. Now, something that both me and Jimmy agree on is doing the roux in a separate skillet. You know how sometimes people will do a roux in the pot that they're going to cook? Well, that's great. If, I mean, if that's your thing and they throw the vegetables into the roux and all that kind of stuff, I, I just don't do it that way and neither does Jimmy. And that way he can measure out as he likes and then you let the roux sit for a little bit and you skim the oil off instead of having to skim it from your pot of gumbo or, or gravy or whatever yeah. you've made. It just makes it easier because it's easier to get the roux off of this than it is out of this pot so but you stop me. and think i can't do a roux like this and feed 500 people right exactly when you're catering and you have to make a bunch of roux now you'll do a big batch at a time in a big cast iron pot yeah. and then you'll freeze whatever you don't need five five gallons of all 25 pounds of flour all perfect flour and mm -hmm. get it on there you go the big pots i do more than that Right, because whenever you're making a gumbo or something that needs that roux in it, you need a lot of it. A lot of it, okay. Mm -hmm. And if you dip it out and put it in, in a big pan, and that way you can be letting it uh, settle out. Mm -hmm. And I usually try to do it the day before. Right, just less things you have to do on the day of the event. That's exactly right. right. It keeps you from getting too... Uh, because when you're catering, you do so many things at once, you wouldn't want to have an issue with your roux because you're doing so many things. So, yeah. Smarter to just do it on the side, let it set. The other thing, Everybody's you gotta happy. cut this off before it gets too dark. You know what? Oh, right, right. It continues to get darker. Mm-hmm. It does keep cooking, because it is super hot. It's hotter than you think. Hey, you don't let a 15 cent roux mess up $150 worth of seafood. Though. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now y'all hang on just a second because we're going to be right back to the Outdoor Kitchen Show. Y'all stay tuned. Call the Bug Man at 923-BUGS. The Bug Man. We get them when you can't. Right. You, you want to eat it all? I got it all. How much all you want to put? Just a little bit. Just so it don't stick to the bottom. That's all. That's Wait. good? Yeah. Huh? Uh-huh. That's good too. I just didn't want the butter to burn. That's all. When Jimmy cooks, he cooks with heat. Perfect. Oh, and, and by the way, I was wrong about the four minute roux. It was an eight minute roux. <laughs> How long did that take? Eight minutes. Okay, so. I don't want to sit exactly square on that. A little cockeyed. I got an anti cockeyed thing. <laughs> you ever see an anti cockeyed thing? Anti cockeyed. That looks like something Jim Babbitt came up with. Jim Babbitt came up with all kinds of stuff. I got oh, yeah. Stuff. See? And it also gets that flame further away so you worry so about I'm, it. So, so I'm not scared to burn my butter in there. There Don't you go. Don't put some butter along with that. 
<laughs> we have real butter. butter. Real I'm butter. Salt, that's I'm salted butter. See, <laughs> see, and that's the thing is we agree on the real butter. Real butter. You gotta have the real stuff. The real yeah. Thing. That's right. We, we might argue over whether we're gonna brown it or we're gonna boil it, but today we're gonna brown it because I want. It's on TV. It's okay. You can do anything you want. That's right. You can that's do it, it in your kitchen. Do it however you like. That's it. There you go. Just don't complain to me on the internet. You know how many phone calls I get out to doing one of these shows? A lot. A lot. Hey, talk. Can I substitute with this? Yeah. Can I use something besides swamp dust? I don't have any swamp dust. Buy swamp dust. Help me out. No, you cannot substitute for the swamp dust. Okay. You must use swamp yeah. dust. Anything else you can substitute, just not the swamp dust. Now, we're going to throw some of the breast in there. Yeah, can we, can we dust them a little bit first? Yeah, or dust them up and put them in there. Or dust them while in there. It's all, all right, good. It. Yeah. It. All right. So we're browning the birds first because I made Jimmy do it. <laughs> um, you can also, if you prefer, just throw them in there when the, when the gumbo is going. That's up yeah. to you. But I like them brown. Well, we got to take the birds out after we brown it so we that's, get the onions. Though. That's right. We take the birds out after we brown them and we put the onions in all them good brown bits. Yeah. And then we get going with the rest of the gumbo. Ain't nothing like a little rub. You know, it, it ain't gonna take but just a little dab of this rub. You notice that? Just a little shake or two. Then the magic comes. Magic swamp dust, that is. We're using the frost version. No MSG. And I'm only gonna do just a little bit, because I like to do it after the fact to taste. Since I didn't measure all of this stuff, we just throw it in the pot like everybody else would do. But we got we got to make that measurement come when we taste it. There you go. Leave a little bit in there to do the onion. Huh? Go ahead. asked Franklin who's always behind the camera oh, yeah. e eating <laughs> yes what's the difference between andouille and smoked sausage well different butchers do have different recipes okay so the andouille that we're using today is French settlement sausages andouille so I called up Brad Dixon and I asked him at your shop what's the difference between andouille and smoked sausage and he said for the andouille he uses cushion meat pork instead of Boston butt the smoked sausage gets the Boston butt, which is a little fattier. The cushion meat is leaner, a 93% lean on the andouille. So it doesn't have as much fat in it. Okay. Um, so you have less fat coming out whenever you're cooking, and, and, and it does have more seasoning. And that's why we was later putting the andouille in, so you don't overcook the andouille. Right, because it is all already smoked. They use all hickory when they smoke, and the andouille also has more seasoning in it as well. It's the same seasoning as the smoked sausage. It's just more of it, so you really get that bite, and, and you don't have the fat. It's also not as fine a grind. It's a little chunkier on the inside, so it's meatier. Um, and a very, very good andouille made in French salmon. Now, another uh, thing that's in the gumbo that if you don't want it, don't put it, is okra. A lot of internet, I don't know, don't give me that look. sacrilegious, man. Don't give me that look. Some people, a lot of people on the internet have big opinions on okra and gumbo, even though gumbo is the African word for okra and how gumbo got started and all that kind of thing. But some people don't like it. They think it's too slimy or whatever. Now what you do, you like the little frozen slices, you put it in and 
I have never had a problem with sliminess in your gumbo. You have no. amazing gumbo, okay? So, some people feel like they need to cook it in a skillet on the side. That's what you like to do, that's what your mama did. It's all good. You don't have to send us uh, internet hate because we didn't do it the same way as you. We're showing you a recipe, yeah. it's okay. And if you don't like, like okra, don't put it in there. It's like jambalaya. Everybody got a recipe for the jambalaya. That's why they have contests and 150 people cooking in it, right? That's right. They're all different. That's right. That's right. It's all about what you want in the pot. That bacon wrapped quail breast with the with that, that grape, the grape in the middle in it. of it. Oh, I, I'm going to have to go over there and break Franklin's arm to get it out of that, that pan. I know. I saw that pan and I was like, you know, that's a lot of quail. Who's going to eat all that? Yeah. I think we figured Franklin. it out. Yeah. That's you saw that picture I took? Cool. I'm good looking stuff. You ever want to impress anybody at your camp? Bacon wrap quail. Now, like you said before, you can do that with the whole quail. Today you did it with the breast. And it does have the, the today you had the breastbone in it. If you wanted to debone it, you could do it that way. It would just be a little yeah. smaller. Um, and the stuffing of the grape gives it a little extra juice at the end, a little sweetness. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. And look, we got our roof still sitting to the side. That's right. Yeah. You were just waiting for all of this to come together and, yeah. and be joyous in the pot. That, that roux, I can't put a whole bunch of it in that one lick. You know? A little bit of time. time. Mm -hmm. Look at the root, how nice and dark that come out. Just sitting there. It wasn't that dark while ago when we turned the fire off, was it? That's the other thing. Some people like a, a root that's dark. Some people like it lighter. I like it lighter than that if I'm doing seafood. I like it about that shade whenever I'm doing a, a wild game or a chicken. Some people like a thick gumbo. I like one that's not quite so thick. Oprah also helps thicken the gumbo. Yeah, that's a pretty color too. Now y'all hang on just a second because we're gonna be right back to the Outdoor Kitchen Show. Y'all stay tuned. Call the Bug Man at 923 Bugs. The Bug Man, we get them when you can't. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Outdoor Kitchen Show. Today we have been at Creative Cajun cooking with Jimmy Babin, cooking up some quail. All right, now we're gonna try a little quail egg tater salad. Since we already had the quail and gumbo, that's the next step is put the potato salad with the gumbo thing. I don't know who eats that together. Huh? Raise your hands out there in TV land, that's what I'm screaming. Look here, I got two different kind of quail eggs. I got the regular, the original thing I did, and then somebody said, I need it a little hotter. Then I get the bowl. I was gonna cut these little eggs. Kind of chop them up a little bit. Get a little bit of eggs, huh? Them other quail work real hard to get these eggs out. But you tell me I make a potato salad. Ooh, I'm going to use a little of that yellow squash chow chow. Somebody will ask, what you do with that? Look at here, I'm going to show you what to do with that. That's good stuff too, I love that stuff. Especially in a chicken salad. Cool. Hey, no doubt. Just dust it. Mm. Ain't nothing like a little magic small piece. And See a smoking frown rub. I love this stuff. How mercy. Shoot that thing. Don't put too much. It bite. We get all this stuff incorporated for a little bit, then we're gonna throw the taters in there. 
I keep moving this bolt around with my hand. I've got a hold. You gotta put a restrainer on that bolt. Look, there's a tater in the tater salad, man. Woo -hoo. You keep overwhelming your containers. <laughs> yeah, he does. Now, Jimmy, tell us what inspired you to make quail egg potato salad. Well, you want me to go get some chicken eggs? Everybody get chicken eggs. That's true. Of course, everybody get quail eggs if they go shopping at a store. I put my quail eggs in. <laughs> That's huh? Gator right. Gator pickles quail eggs. You know if it's good, it says gator pickles on the thing. That's huh? right. You can get those at the Lawn Supermarket, of course. And so, what do you think? How's the potato salad? Oh, uh, I already ate some. <laughs> I need to put some on the gumbo over there mm -hmm. with the, the quail and andouille and okra gumbo. Oh, I'm telling you. Mm. Now, of course, for all of our recipes, you can go to creativecajuncooking.com and order all the products and everything. Mm -hmm. We also have all the videos and recipes on our website at theoutdoorkitchenshow.com. Now, we always have more for you, so make sure you check us out next time here on the Outdoor Kitchen Show. And look, y'all want to bite of this tater salad? <laughs> and quail egg tater salad ain't normal, but <laughs> neither am I. <laughs> <laughs>